Hi, I'm Chris Forbes here at the Labs in Life at The Ohio State University. Welcome to OHIO. On today's show, we'll pulverize some protons at the Large Hadron Collider. We'll see how athletes stay fit and healthy at the Labs in Life. And how pets are playing a role in the treatment of cancer. I'm here at the Large Hadron Collider on the Franco-Swiss border near Geneva, Switzerland. As you can see behind me, this massive particle accelerator has 9,300 magnets, spans a 27-kilometer ring between the two countries. Okay, I'm not actually in Switzerland, but a few... But a few Ohio State researchers have been there since the project's inception. Let's let them talk about it. We are trying to create the conditions of the early universe, the millionth of a second after the Big Bang. What we can do is use the Large Hadron Collider as a very sensitive microscope. CERN is an international laboratory that was uh, created in the 50s. It's a huge lab with some of the smartest people in the world. And the idea was to pursue high energy particle physics. They built the LHC, which is the accelerator that collides the protons and protons. A collider is any kind of facility which takes two beams and collides them head on. The Large Hadron uh, Collider is basically a ring 27 kilometers in circumference and half of it's in Switzerland and half of it's in France. So you have thousands of magnets around the ring which are bending the particles in precise motion to keep them in a circular orbit. And as it passes certain points in the ring, it gets an electromagnetic push. Like the current of electrons going through the wire in your house, you have currents of protons going through this vacuum tube which is called the collider. You have proton-proton collisions that happen at various points around this, this huge uh, accelerator. And even though you're just knocking together two particles, you create hundreds of other particles out of uh, thin air, you could say. As Einstein said, equals mc squared. And that's what we're doing. We're converting this energy, kinetic energy, into mass. Particle physics is the space between the known and the unknown. We, we know a lot about the, the natural world, but there are things we don't know. There are some ideas of what we'll find, but uh, the speculation is wild. We don't really know what we'll find. I would love to see all of the, the theories wrong at these higher energies, because I think that's how we'll really learn something. And you're going to learn the most if you find things that nobody expects. There's still one particle missing, the so-called Higgs particle. We hope to see that at the LHC. But in fact, all theorists expect that there's going to be many more discoveries besides a simple Higgs. Grand unification. Many black holes. Super string theory. Quark blue on plasma. New large extra dimensions. Dark matter is made up of particles that we don't understand what they are. And so that's the kind of question that we can actually answer at the LHC. So it's just the very, very exciting and, and fundamental things about nature. The whole point is to reconstruct what happened uh, in that collision. You have to have experiments that are located around the ring that can detect the particles that are produced. There's four detectors on the accelerator. OSU is the only institute in the entire United States that has collaborations on three of the experiments. OSU is unique in terms of having a major commitment, not just a token commitment, but a major commitment to Atlas CMS and ALICE, all three. We have some very good people in the field of particle physics here that are able to get involved with, with so many different projects. We took part in all the design of the NCAP system, which is the rings on the outside of the detector, and then got heavily into the electronics. This is one of 468 chambers on the experiment. Ohio State built the front end boards that amplify the signals, digitize them, and read them out. 
we built a total of 2,600 of these boards. Amplifiers built at Ohio State are known by the entire collaboration as Buckeye chips. People actually understand what Buckeyes are throughout Europe now, thanks to us. If I were to take our chambers and lay them out on a football field, they'd cover the entire field, including the two end zones, and realize we have a tenth of a millimeter resolution over that whole region and can tell exactly where the particle went. September 2008 was the published time that the LHC was going to start up. We'd all been waiting 16 years to see things happen. We saw the first events come out and we absolutely were thrilled. We were drinking champagne, enjoying ourselves. There was a lot of fanfare and, and a lot of media events. And then three days into this celebration, the disaster took place. The failure started when a weld between two magnets started arcing. They tried to ramp up the energy in the accelerator. When they did that, it overheated. And it arced into the superconductor, and all the magnets started dumping their helium. And so the helium now blows up, and that goes non-liquid. It becomes a gas very quickly. And so it pushed magnets several feet in either direction. This massive wall of helium expanded down the tunnel at greater than the speed of sound. It moved up to the surface and it blew the containment doors over a mile and a half into the farmer's fields on the sides. I was crestfallen, to say the least. <laughs> the first reaction I, I was just, oh my God, I mean, what, what was destroyed in the LHC? Getting the world's most complicated machine up and running and expecting there to be no glitch would be rather strange. It's unfortunate that it was rather catastrophic holding us down for a year, but um, we had plenty of work to do anyway. We were ready, but now we're even more ready.